Hi, everybody. Renee Bates here with Bates Botanical Boot Camp, where we're going to talk about growing orchids today. Phalaenopsis orchids, mainly the moth orchid, is what we will talk about, and we'll cover some watering, light, temperature, fertilizing, repotting, and maybe some fun facts and fiction and hopefully a lot of truth. Okay, watering. When people kill orchids, it's usually because of overwatering or forgetting about them for months and months, but generally it's about overwatering. How much water do people need to put on their orchids? Let me start with how not to do it. There was a marketing gimmick called Just Add Ice. And while you can do that, let's think about where orchids grow. They're in the tropics mainly, uh, Indonesia, Australia, the uh, South Pacific mostly, China, Taiwan, and they live in trees. And they live in the crotch of the tree where the branch comes to the trunk of the tree. And so they're not sitting in a, a lot of soil. They are getting watered regularly, but they're drying out fast. So we need to try to duplicate that as best we can in a pot. And the way we do that is by watering it well. If you think about tropical rain, that's a lot of rain. It's more than three or four ice cubes. So water your orchid well. Do not let it sit in water once you've watered it much beyond what this pot right here. It has an attached tray. Can you see that? It's got an attached tray that doesn't hold a lot of water. So I'm not concerned if there's water sitting in that when I get through watering, but it's, that's about it. But water the orchid well, water it with room temperature water. Don't water it with cold water. And, um, then let it dry out in between. Now, I generally water these orchids about once a week. However, I have some that dry out quicker than others, like this little one right here would dry out faster than say this large one or this large one over here. Uh, I have three orchids planted together in this large pot here. And that is a good thing because if I only had one Phalaenopsis, like even a six inch planted in this pot, it might stay too wet. And orchids that stay too wet tend to drop blooms and leaves. And sometimes they will rot out right in the crown of the plant, right in the top of the plant. For me, it's the yellow ones that tend to do that. I don't know why. I've had I've had some yellow reblooms, but Often it's the yellow ones that will do that. Now, I brought a variety of different orchids today, and I think I have one around here that has a bad leaf. Can you see under here? Okay, that is probably happening because it's not getting very much light. The way I have these sitting, I'm growing orchids in an eastern facing window. If you think about, again, where orchids grow in their native habitat, they're growing in a tree. So they're getting dappled light coming into that tree. Here in the sunny south, our best bet is to put them in an eastern facing window. They can get direct sun, but only if it's early in the day. They can't get direct sun through the middle of the day. It, it causes, sun scald on an orchid just looks like a light patch. Like a little bit of a sun. Thank you, and you're hearing the voice of lovely Caroline in the clouds. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I will be back here just commenting questions um, and just helping along the way. Thank you, Caroline. You are welcome. Sun scald. Can you see that? There's oh, sun scald. That's what it looks like. And you say, Renee, if you've got them in an eastern facing window, why did you get sun scald? I got sun scald because I did put them out on the porch. Mm. And uh, sometimes I just want to put them outside and just douse them with some stinky fertilizer, like fish and seaweed fertilizer. Eh, there we are. <laughs> love this, but I don't love it in the house because it stinks, but it works great. And it's an organic fertilizer. 
So sometimes I do that. I used to put all my orchids out. And Tyler, you've got a photo of my previous batch of orchids, if you don't mind showing our viewers. Okay, all those lovely orchids. I would put them outside on the porch where I could easily water them, and that was great. But what happens when they're outside is the snails get a hold of them mm. and chew, and the mealybugs come. I don't recommend putting the orchids outside anymore. They love it, and they grow great, but mealybugs are so hard to control. I used a Q-tip swab and some alcohol and would go in there, and, and, and I would pinch them, and I would pull them off the leaves and, and just go at them. But the ants come in, and they farm them because they like to eat them. So the ants were putting them underneath that glass table, they were putting them just everywhere so that they could keep their mealy bug farm and food <laughs> going. And I ended up just ditching all those orchids. I was about to ask, how mm. did you treat those? But it's hard because they get in the crevices and it's almost impossible. Oh, mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. not fun. And I am not one to spray chemicals unless I absolutely have some little isolated thing I just, I don't like chemicals. I like to work organically as much as possible. And so I just said, eh, we'll start over and we won't put them outside anymore. And so far, this batch, most of these are mine, but some of these um, I picked up in the garden center this morning and we'll talk about those. So I'm going to cut this off. Just take some scissors and voila. Now, Renee, when you remove leaves from your orchid, do you take it all the way back to the base where the leaf comes out, or do you just cut off the damaged area? What would you suggest? Um, well, sometimes I just cut off the damaged area. See where I clipped this one? That one's damaged on the end, and I didn't like the way it looked. Um, I just accidentally cut a root off. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> don't cut your roots off. This is not going to be detrimental to this plant, but these are important. I had a, a very good friend, I have a very good friend, Reba, whose housekeeper came in one day and cut all the aerial roots <gasps> off her orchid. She thought she was being helpful. She just didn't know. But they get moisture from the air through these roots. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But Did it kill your friend's orchid? I don't know. Probably. Oh, that's sad. Probably, or, or, or maybe not. But anyway, yeah, when you're trimming, you can, you can trim it all the way back. Let's talk about trimming the, the, the bloom stem. So you can see this, this little guy is almost finished. So what I'll do, there's a couple of things you can do, and I have done these things both ways. Sometimes you could just let that bloom stem be, and more growth will happen out on the end for this season. Or you can just go ahead and prune it all the way back, which is what we're going to do. And I'm going to take that out. And I love these little rubberized wires right here for, that's probably going to be too hard to see, but these are so great. There's several different ways that that I use. Sometimes I use these cute little hair clips mm -hmm. for yes. holding what I use. things up. And what's really fun is if you take your glue gun or some kind of glue and put some lichen or Spanish moss on that if you want to hide it. <gasps> That's it, a fantastic ooh. idea. Yeah, I had in that picture that you saw, I had a lot of, of moss and lichen there. Okay. okay, so here we go. We're going to go back to the plant right here. Ching. Done. Wow. You can the whole the, stem? The whole stem goes. because Taking it back. Uh, unless you're going to wait for this little bit that might come out on the end, it it's better just to get rid of it. So that is about pruning. Now, I've got a black spot here right in there. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm just going to leave it be for now. I, I don't, I'm not going to mess with that. Let's talk about repotting. Now, see all these roots in here? At one point, they were roots on the top like this. Now, this one has one big major aerial root. And the way that I handle that, this, this aerial root is seeking moisture. So I just kind of 
fold it in and I've got it in this pot and I've got some kind of little can, cat food can in the bottom to keep this orchid from sitting in water when I water it. Now I'll water it heavy and then I'll take this and pour it over another orchid or, or pour it out. But I just let that be until I'm ready to repot this one. This one could get repotted but um, it doesn't have that many aerial roots. It actually has some brown ones. And you can go through, if they are brown, they're not doing anything, you can go through and prune these off. And uh, that one is just holding on by a thread, so I'm gonna <laughs> get rid of it. Yep. And now, Caroline? I, how do you know when it's time to repot? Like, what are the signs your orchid will give you to say like, I'm ready for a bigger pot. I need some fresh soil. It's time for a new home. Yeah, well, when it gets several of these that you can put in a pot. Now, actually, I'm saying this one has two, so I could go ahead and repot this one. But today we're gonna we're going to repot a smaller one. Um, they kind of like being root bound, and this one definitely has plenty of roots going on. And this is great as long as you don't let it stay too dry or let it stay dry for too long. Let me, let me say that right, because <laughs> if you don't water these correctly and let them dry out in between, you're gonna have dead orchids. It's crazy how quickly they go downhill. Um, I have found when they do stay too wet, so. Mm, they do, they just don't like that. They are not a all. fan. Got another little guy here. So this one needs repotting, and if you can see, there's just not very much in the top of this. It's probably got knocked over several times, and the bark has fallen out of it. And so I thought this one would be a good one to repot. Even though it doesn't have tons of roots, we're going with a small pot. You, do, you don't want to go to a large pot when you're repotting an orchid. And when do you do it? Of course, when you've got a lot of roots coming, but you want to do it after the bloom season. So July is a great time to do it. Uh, now, these orchids that are still in bloom, I probably would not repot these right now. And while this one on the corner, it has two orchids in it. And if you can see this pot, it's going crazy this year with all these. Look at oh, all these roots. Oh, that's amazing. That looks so cool. Yeah. It's, it's really going, but I'm not going to repot that. Even though it's huge, it could stand to be in this size pot over here now, likely. I'm gonna wait until next year. Um, one thing I want to say about the bloom time. Orchids, typically, after you've had them in your home, you know, you buy them and you take them home and you want them to stay in bloom for a long time, but after you've had them in your home, don't expect orchids to bloom all the time because they're just not going to. They're going to bloom typically starting in December. And these were putting up spikes and, and I think these two white ones were beginning to show their first blooms opening up in December. So these orchids have been in bloom since December, but they're getting great care. Um, I went away for a while. Our daughter, Sarah, comes over and takes care of the orchids for me. And she does a great job. So when I got back several weeks later, it was glorious. I walked into all these blooms. But you can keep your orchids blooming for months. I am not joking. These have been in bloom that long. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it can happen. I got hooked on orchid growing probably in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, those of you who were gardening then, you're going to remember, I'm gonna skip around a little bit here before we go into repotting because I think this is so much fun. Um, have you guys heard of a book called The Orchid Thief? It was, uh, you guys are no. so young, you haven't <laughs> heard of that. Okay, it came out in 1998 and it was a nonfiction book by uh, an American journalist named Susan Orlean. And she, she based her investigation for this book on this 1994 arrest of a horticulturist in southern Florida who was using the Seminole Indians in the Fakahatchee Strand Preserve because he thought that they would escape 
uh, because they were Native Americans, they could pull these rare orchids from the trees and he could sell them. And uh, so that, that's a fascinating book. And I, I've, if you haven't read it, it's a fun read. And uh, I think Rotten Tomatoes gives it like 91%. Ooh. Actually, that's the movie called Adaptation, which is kind of a brilliant movie. It's got a cast of characters, Meryl Streep, uh, Chris Cooper, and it's a movie about making a movie about this book. That's wild. I it had is. no it idea the connection. Wild. I do know the movie. I just hadn't heard the book, so I'm okay. going to have to check out the book. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen that movie in such a long time, but the other actor uh, in it is Nicolas Cage, and he plays <laughs> the guy that's writing the screenplay, and he also plays his neurotic twin brother. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Orchids. Uh, there's also another uh, book called Orchid Fever, and that goes through the lunacy of people that get possessed with orchids, and they want to, you know, they want to own the rarest orchid. You know, way back it was tulips that when the Dutch started producing all these tulips. I think there's a book called Tulip Fever. But anyway, a little fun. Uh, Orchid Fever is called A Horticultural Tale of Love, Lust, and Lunacy. <laughs> All right. Let's After go back. After those rare orchids. After those rare orchids. Yes. Uh, let's go back to repotting, shall we? Okay. And I have got some, uh, I've got Tyler's Lunch Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Yeah. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Happy to provide. Yes, I have a orchid mix. And let me show you what that looks like. I have orchid mix right here. And uh, I have some sphagnum moss, which you can buy in small containers now. We don't, we don't sell large bags of sphagnum moss anymore because it's not very environmentally friendly to do that we're we're using other substrate you know that i have grown orchids in um wine courts as a matter of fact oh. here's some right here in this one I, i've used a mix i heard somebody huh. say once that if you buy an orchid and it is in bark then when you repot it you should repot it with bark and if you buy one that is full of sphagnum moss or some kind of mossy uh material then that's what you should do but that hasn't worked for me so well i tend to do a mix of the moss and the bark because bark unless you soak it really really well it's not going to get up close to those roots when you get that the roots in there there's going to be a lot of air pockets and i don't like that I want to have some moss so that those roots have got moisture around them. So I've had this soaking for a little while. This has uh, perlite in it, that, that white, and, and uh, I don't have any wine corks in here, but you don't have to have. I have also grown orchids with packing peanuts um, stuffed up in it. As a matter of fact, that reminds me of a large orchid, and I think that it was in this big blue pot right here. Um, when I was growing orchids back in the late 90s, 2000s, I had a violet pink, like this color right here, growing in this pot, and I promise you it had a hundred blooms on it one year. It was in the front window of the garden center, so it was getting that eastern light, and that window's a little tinted, so it wasn't too strong on it, and it it was very, very happy. I think it eventually aged out and passed on, but it sounds gorgeous. It though. was gorgeous. What did you have it growing in? What potting uh, medium? It was it was a medium like this. Mm -hmm. It was in bark and it was in uh, sphagnum moss, and it had some packing peanuts. I had repotted it maybe a couple of times, so I had, you know, just graduated up a little bit. That's what you want to do when you're repotting is just graduate up a little bit. We're going to. Take this out. I watered this little orchid well this morning so that when I took it out, it wouldn't break because these, these roots can be brittle and you don't want to break them. So Caroline has this beautiful little pot for me. I'm going to put this media in the bottom. 
So this is a nice messy little project. So I'm, I'm just pushing this down here. And what you want to be sure of, not to drop too much out from the core. If that happens, take some moss and push it up in there so that when it's in there, it doesn't have a big dry pocket in the middle of it. So I'm going to just take this wet growing medium and fill it in all around. Now, I don't want this orchid sticking way up out of the top. It's going to naturally push up as more roots develop in the bottom. This one over here is doing that. But I'm just going to gingerly place this growing media in here. White pot, white orchid. Isn't that going to be elegant? Mm-hmm. I love repotting orchids. That's a good tip, though, watering before so the roots are more pliable. Yes. You definitely want to do that. Because they do snap so easily. Caroline, do, when you get pests, do you tend to use any kind of insecticidal soap or anything to try to I get usually um, do like a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Mm -hmm. But I have heard, so Paula in our office, she also grows orchids, and she said that they can be really sensitive to um, like what alcohol, like that scent that it puts off. Oh. So I do try to be mindful, although I haven't noticed it, but I haven't used too much alcohol around mine. Don't intoxicate those orchids. Yeah, don't make them go wild. Uh -uh. <laughs> but mealybugs, I mean, they get in the crevices of the leaves. They'll get all over the buds. I've had them really bad on orchids before to where yeah. I had to toss them. Yeah, I'd just rather toss them than try to go at them with some kind of high-powered chemical. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that would be. Yeah, there's a couple there's a couple options out there that you could use. We have like a three in one treatment that's got neem oil. It's got pyrethrins in it, which I don't love to use, but mm -hmm. if it's a last case scenario and you want to save the plant, you might need to go to a harsher chemical. But alcohol, I mean, it really does work wonders. I've been able to get rid of mealybugs on other plants with rubbing alcohol. Okay. I think this is a happy little orchid. got its new home it has some, some new, new soil home. We'll... look at that how about that and its last little bloom is just hanging on so <laughs> still there it's still there there's water accumulating in the bottom of this and i'll probably let it sit here for the day and then i'll dump it out because you definitely actually i'm going to dump it out right now i'm just gonna do this when you repot one Think about how it's been sitting in this and drying out super fast. So it's going to its new home. It does not need to sit wet. Of course, you have to water it really well in the beginning, but this might stay wet for a while. Mm -hmm. So I may not water this again for a week and a half, maybe. I'm, I'm going to check it. You know, putting your finger in the bottom of the pot to detect moisture is a great way. You can also buy a moisture meter. I like the finger method myself, but you could mm -hmm. do that. Now, I have some mood moss at home. I get boxes of mood moss, and I think sometimes we may sell that at the garden center. And it's gorgeous, and I have wanted to cover the tops of my orchids with that. And I have done that before, and I've killed them because it's too much moisture. Mm -hmm. It's just too much moisture for them. Uh, they're not accustomed to sitting with, you know, three inches of moss on the top of them. Now, what is mood moss? Well, it's a type of moss that grows like small mountains. It's beautiful. And um, we have sold it in boxes before. And for people that don't want to grow or have a hard time growing plants, they can have moss and just keep it moist, and it's quite easy, and mm -hmm. it looks so cool, especially in these contemporary homes, uh, contemporary decoration, to have some kind of green. And if you have a great big bowl, you can cover it with mood moss and just let it be wet. Sounds like something that would be nice over a bonsai, like on the soil. Yeah, mm -hmm. around it that might. tree. Yeah, it mood might. moss. Mood moss. Yeah, it's quite lovely. 
Let's talk about feeding our orchids, shall we? I talked about the fish and seaweed fertilizer that I like to use, but I have to take them outside when I do that. But a couple of times a year, I will do this. Uh, the other thing that I will use is um, Monty's. Uh, I like this. Uh, premium plant growth. There's another one. Uh, either one of these. I use this product for when I'm doing supplemental. Now, I, I failed to put my Viragra in this, but I can sprinkle this on top. Uh, Earth Mix Viragra, this product right here. This is gold. These are worm castings, and I can take a little bit of this. This is organic worm castings, the growing media that earthworms grow in, and then their excrement, and it is very nutritious for plants. So what I'll do is sprinkle this on the top of this orchid that I just repotted. And I can go through and do this a couple of times a year. I just do it lightly and it gets watered in. And so they've got an organic media. Because you think about, again, where do orchids grow? They're in the top of these, or they're in these trees. And there's all kinds of critters that also live in these trees. You've got birds, bats, guano, which is a great fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you probably got some other bugs also that, that live in the trees that naturally feed the orchids because nobody's out there with this feeding those orchids. <laughs> <laughs> and they're doing very well. So, And it looks good, too. Worm castings are really dark and rich. Mm -hmm. I use it on a lot of my houseplants. I'll mix it into soil or top dress it like you're doing with mm -hmm. that. Because I love some all-natural um, products. And I love Earth Mix. Yeah, I do too. That Earth Mix Viragra is so good. So this little guy's still hanging on. Caroline also has questions that she has uh, that people ask in the garden center. And so Caroline, feel free to jump in anytime with those. There is a question we get a lot. People are just wondering, you know, I've seen orchids bloom more than once a year, or I've had an orchid sitting in a window. It's happy, it's healthy, but it hasn't bloomed in years. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give on that? I know you were saying yours starts blooming in December and it stays blooming, but how can they, you know, try to ensure that their orchid does in fact bloom at least once a year? Correct watering and fertilizing. If an orchid has stopped blooming, it's likely very root bound and it has a lot of aerial roots that are reaching out and all it's getting is the humidity and the air and it's, it's not able to take in as much water and obviously nutrition. It needs to be fertilized. Now, I haven't done this in years, but I have actually put fertilizer in my mister bottle, and I have done some uh, foliar feeding. But I tend to get great results by fertilizing at the soil level, mm -hmm. and, and that works well. But the other part of that is probably light, having the orchid in the, the right morning light. Early morning light's really great, but... It's, it's, it's a combination of things that yeah. orchids need. You have to find that happy, happy medium, meet it at its right point. So yes. you just were misting. Can we talk about misting a little bit? Because I know we did sure. it before we lost the broadcast. Um, sure. Because people ask a lot about humidity when it comes to orchids. Do I need to be misting it? If so, how often should I be doing it? And what parts of the plant? Okay. Misting can happen all over the plant. You can, you can mist from the top down. I like to mist right at the soil level also on the roots, and then I'll go around the pot. You know, you've got all these roots over here on this pot, so I will do that all around. And it seems kind of fun to mist, yes, mist your orchids. <laughs> Try to do that once a day, and it's especially important in the wintertime to mist your orchids because we dry out. You know, Tennessee is quite humid in the summertime, and they benefit from misting in the summertime because in our air conditioning, that tends to dry the air out. But in the wintertime, the air is particularly dry. So misting daily, if you can, 
is very important. Obviously, my orchids in the winter did not get misted daily, but they got enough. They got enough that they needed. Now, something just happened on this orchid that I want to show you guys. I had a little slip coming in this morning, and I dropped this orchid. And this is the newest leaf on the top, and it came off. This is not going to kill this plant, okay? It's going to recover. It will not grow from this point right here, but it will send out another piece right here. And another fun fact about orchids, when you have a new aerial root come out on your orchid, you will have a new leaf come out. Those are related. One, I guess it's like one root per leaf, maybe. I don't know, but you'll definitely have that. Be careful with your aerial roots. These things are brittle, and I have snapped them off more times than I can tell you. This is going to have to get repotted next year. And you're probably wondering, Renee, how are you going to do that? Because it's got all those roots coming out of the holes. I'm going to water it super well when that time comes. And I'm going to gingerly work those roots out of these, these holes and put it in a pot about the size of this one over here. I think this is probably <clears throat> eight inch and that one's probably six inch. We're going to need an update on that when you go to repot <laughs> it. Maybe some videos or photos, because that's going to be a process. That will be a process. It certainly will. So, okay. So Mary on Facebook asks, do you ever take your orchids outside? If so, under trees? Yes, Mary. Um, I do take, I have taken my orchids outside, and I have had them on uh, concrete and uh under trees or on my porch, but uh, I was saying a little bit earlier, and you may have just tuned in, I don't take my orchids outside anymore because they tend to get pests, and pests are difficult to deal with. They tend to get mealybugs, and some of you may not know what a mealybug is. They're evil. They're evil <laughs> little white things, and what they tend to, to do is is get in all the little hidey holes that are really hard for you to get to with a cotton swab with some alcohol on it. I have gotten a, a cuticle device, you know, manicure tools and pulled them out and squished them, which does bring some satisfaction. But <laughs> in, the, in the end, I ended up tossing all of my orchids because of the mealybug problem. Uh, the other problem that I have also seen at times is scale. And scale is a hard little bug that will be along the edge of the underside of the leaf. And they have this sticking excrement that they exude. And you'll see stickiness on your table where you're growing your orchids. And you'll say, ah, oh, what mm. is that? And then you'll fill up under that leaf and there'll be little hard pieces of scale along the edge, which you can... You can certainly get off, but that's another pest that's hard to, hard to deal with. But I guess if you catch these things early, I have tried putting cinnamon out around, not in the plant so much, but around the plant to try to control the ants that are mining the, the mealy bug farm. And um, yeah, it, it's a process, but keeping them inside will go a long way toward not having pest. And uh, Linda's asking, my orchid is sprouting a leaf at the top of the stem. How do I deal with that? Ah, Linda has the opportunity for a brand new orchid. Um, if, if you leave these stems on, sometimes they'll put more bloom buds out or sometimes they will grow a leaf and I've never had that good fortune, but I've seen it happen before, and I understand that's how you propagate a new plant. So you can take that. I, I would probably wait a little bit and see if a root also comes out with that leaf so that you can put it in a really tiny baby pot with, with moss and bark and moisture and grow another plant from it. But 
don't keep it wet all the time because it will rot. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple customers. I've never had the um, good fortune of having that happen with one of my orchids, but I have had two customers bring in photos. And one of them, I think, had three pups is what I called them, like new little orchid babies coming off. And it almost looked like a spider plant, an airplane plant, how they'll send off like a little little arm and then that pup comes off. So yeah, that's an exciting thing to happen. It is fun. Mm -hmm. Count yourself fortunate if that happens for you. Yes. And okay. Carol is asking, do you sell all size orchid pots at Bates Nursery? Caroline? We do. So right now in stock, we have four inch orchid pots. We've got six inch. And then I believe we do have some that are more um, of a rectangular shape that are going to be about five inches wide by probably three inches deep or five inches long by three inches wide. So we do have a few different shapes. Um, so yeah, come out and look at our, our cute little orchid pot selection. Very good. And, and other types of orchids you have. Yes, she, we do. Mm -hmm. This is a dendrobian. I have grown these in the past, but wow. Caroline and I were, were discussing our dendrobian orchid growing. These are beautiful, and sometimes they have really tall stalks, and they come in several colors. They come in yellows. I think the one that I had was yellow with some beautiful spots. I've got a yellow one. Yeah. But we were talking about my bloom spike was just not happy once I brought it into my house, so uh -huh. hopefully once I remove that, you know, fertilize it, it'll get a new bloom spike next year or at uh -huh. the end of this year. I hope so. These are so pretty. They're really lovely. Uh, there are cattleya orchids, and cattleyas are what I call corsage orchids. Uh, it used to be, I don't know what they do now, but it used to be when you went to the prom, you had a corsage that was either pinned to your dress or on your wrist, and they were cattleya orchids. That's a large orchid, and those require quite a bit of light to grow. I, I was fortunate to grow up next door to the Ernsberger twins, and they had a hobby greenhouse, and they grew all kinds of things. So my love for plants started fairly young through being their annoying little sister next door because <laughs> they were, they're like family still. And they, their father got into growing cattleyas, and he had a ton of them, and I'd just go in there, and they'd just be gorgeous but they're they're fairly short and I think Caroline has some up in the garden center we do we have some little baby cattleyas we actually have one that I noticed uh, is putting off its very first bloom spike so this grower that we get them in they come in um, less mature so it's going to take usually a couple years for them to start blooming but it's very exciting because one is shooting off its first bloom spike so we do have quite a bit in the garden center right now oh that's great and mm -hmm. you know if you don't have a greenhouse you can get a grow light mm -hmm. and grow things like cattleya. I yes, think, you can. Pretty easy. I have a grow light in my house, and it's got this nice pink light. So it's, I don't know, it makes me happy. It's kind of a nice color. Ah. So uh, another little fun fact about orchids. Um, orchids come from the ancient Greek word phalaena, which means a kind of moth. And I've heard people call these moth orchids and um I've always called them phalaenopsis, I guess, because, you know, we're in the plant business. But we interchange back and forth between botanical names and common names. But I'm sure these types of orchids have a lot of other different kinds of names as well. But this orchid that we see and, and grow mostly today came about when many other plants gained popularity in the Victorian times. You know, there was somebody out there that went to the Far East and they said, look, this special, special plant I have. And um, hence, orchid fever. Mm-hmm. Orchid fever back around. Yeah. So do we have any other questions out there? I'm not seeing any currently. Okay. Yeah, and you covered pretty much all the questions that I get up in our garden center. Very good. And I think I have covered... The notes that I have, just remember, water, not too much, or rather, not too often. Water a lot, but allow it to dry out totally in between. Mist often. Fertilize either this, and you can do this in the house. It's just not that friendly. 
If you don't want something stinky and you do want something natural, top dress with Viragra often, and that will take you a long way. Orchids like, they like, they're like roses. They, they like some fertilization. And this has been fun. I enjoy talking about things that I love, and it's easy to talk about things that you love. And Caroline is here almost every day at Bates Nursery, and she can help you select orchids and help you with your orchids anytime. Come out to Bates Nursery. We're so grateful. Thank you.